Today we are going to make a DIY self-cleaning blast gate. On comes design. This project is pretty much entirely built out of half inch plywood. I started by ripping a four foot section of plywood down into six inch strips. I then cross cut these strips into six inch squares. This blast gate is great because you can use whatever fittings work for your particular dust collection scenario. I'm using four inch sewer and drain couplings on the top side and a salvaged bottom half of an absolutely terrible Rockler stable gate for a direct connection to four inch flex hose on the bottom side. I measured my connectors with a set of calipers and then transferred this measurement over to a compass to trace the appropriate size circle onto my top and bottom pieces. After that, I fabricated my inside runners. These are made from a one inch strip of plywood. I headed over to the bandsaw to refine my shapes, but before we get into that, let's talk about the design. First, there's this bottom piece made to accept a four inch flex hose. It has two L-shaped runners attached with tabs that keep the actual gate from falling out of the housing. These tabs correspond with the T-shaped gate that gets sandwiched inside of the top and bottom assemblies. I first cut my L-shaped runners at the bandsaw, and once these were all cut to size, I could do a dry fit and verify my inside measurement for the T-shaped blast gates. Once I could verify all my measurements were correct, I refined the shape of the middle gate at the bandsaw. With all my parts cut out, I could go to the drill press and cut out the appropriate sized holes for all my fittings. I set my circle cutting bit to the appropriate size and began cutting out my parts. The hole in the PVC is slightly larger than the flex hose connector. If you're building one yourself, you can make your circle whatever size you need for your specific application. When drilling, I drilled about halfway through one side, then flipped the piece to finish the cut. This helps prevent any tear out in the plywood with this specific bit. Next, I mixed up some five minute epoxy and set my sewer and drain coupler in the top circle. For the bottom half, I needed to first square up the salvaged connector from the Rockler blast gate. Once square, I roughed up the glue side with some sandpaper for better adhesion and epoxied it to the corresponding assembly. Once dry, I took my parts over to the belt sander and flushed up any PVC that was proud of the plywood on the bottom side, and also cleaned up any excess epoxy. The inside of the blast gate is a very tight fit, and there's no margin for excess glue or overhang from the connectors. To ensure the best seal possible, I added some silicone caulking to the outside edges of the connections, and I cleaned this up with a caulk tool. This sealant provides an airtight connection and adds extra stability. Now I can start the glue up. I use tight bond quick and thick for all my shop projects. I once again use my super glue trick to achieve an instant adhesion with my parts so I can continue the build without worrying about the full dry time of my wood glue. To reduce friction inside the blast gate, I applied some paste wax on the inside faces of my parts. Be careful not to apply any paste wax where you will later need to glue your top and bottom assemblies together. I once again used the super glue trick for my glue up on the top piece and set the whole outside assembly aside to dry. While this was drying, I took care of a few more small details before moving on. I first ran my middle gate piece 
through the planer, just taking the smallest bit possible off the top to reduce any friction. I also took some MDF and ripped it into two inch wide strips for my wall mounts. I used a dado blade to create a recess for the whole blast gate to sit in. These pieces are cut into 8 inch sections to give room for the screw holes. Ideally these would also be made out of plywood, but I only had scrap MDF on hand at this point. Last, I cut 3 quarter inch strips of the same plywood for the blast gate to create some handles. These need to be cut to the same width as the inner gate piece and are used to keep the gate from sliding out the back side of the housing. To prevent the blast gates from ever vibrating open when they're supposed to be closed, I added some neodymium magnets to the top half of the housing and handle for the inner gate. I drilled a small recess for the magnet on the drill press and used epoxy to secure the magnet. I highly recommend epoxy instead of super glue for holding magnets in place for a great long term hold. Be sure to pay attention to polarity here so your magnet does not force the blast gate open instead of pulling it closed. With everything dry, I flushed up all the edges of the housing on the belt sander and rounded my edges. If your magnets are slightly proud, you can also sand these down at the belt sander for a perfectly flush fit. If you're enjoying or learning something from this video or one of my other builds, hit subscribe. This is the best thing you can do to help me continue to make free content on YouTube. Even though this is a shop project, I still want everything to look nice and neat. I took some time to remove the stickers from the PVC and use mineral spirits to clean up the fittings and the gate. I attached the top and bottom handles to the blast gate. If you're building one for yourself, know that once you do this step, there's no turning back as the middle gate piece will now be locked in for good. I went to the belt sander one last time to flush up the handle and round the edges so everything would look nice and neat. Now I can move on to addressing the self-cleaning aspect of the blast gate. This design keeps the back side behind the gate open so lodged dust and debris can be pushed out every time the gate is closed. However, this leaves a huge gap that will reduce suction at the tool. To close this up while still letting dust out, I created a flap out of cardboard from a cereal box. I covered it in aluminum HVAC tape for strength and adhesion of this flap to the wood. The suction from the dust collector pulls this flap closed when in use, but once the blast gate is closed, the flap lifts up, allowing dust and chips to fall out. With the blast gate finished, all I had to do was glue it into the MDF wall bracket, and I also applied some paste wax to the exterior. This blast gate is super solid and way better than the cheap plastic or metal ones you can buy from Rockler or other woodworking stores. This is a super easy one day build that can be done with mostly scrap pieces you might already have laying around in your shop. The best part about this design is that you can modify it to fit anywhere in your system by just building it with different top and bottom connectors depending on your needs. These gates have a perfect seal and no air gets pulled through when closed. I made this design by combining several ideas from some other YouTube videos. I will link to those below. Here's my new Jet 2 horsepower Cyclone Dust Collector. I recently purchased it to replace the junk Rockler Dust Collector I had been using. Finally, I want to extend a huge thank you to Make Nashville. I recently used their CNC's to make these pipe holders for my dust collection. I'm going to be going in depth with their CNC's on a couple of upcoming videos in the next few weeks. Stay tuned for those.